and just to reiterate, we don't think cellular senescence is the only target for aging. There are probably numerous targets, but we focused on it because it is an important target and it's something that we have demonstrated in animal models works to extend lifespan. So let me just describe a cellular senescence. So what happens to cells if they're damaged? And this could be if they're irradiated or exposed to smoking or exposed to UV. If they shut themselves down and what they do, so this is, these are cells in culture and in these cells, they've been irradiated to cause a lot of DNA damage. And what happens to these cells is they change their morphology and they change their metabolism. So these are cells become senescent because they become damaged just like they would in your liver, kidney, or brain with aging. And these senescent cells, what they do is they release inflammatory proteins. And the reason they do this is they want to stimulate the immune system to come in and get rid of these bad cells. So these are cells that can become cancerous, but they can also lead to a variety of adverse events. So our body wants to get rid of them. So the immune system, when we're young and healthy, comes in and clears these cells. The problem is, as we age, our immune system doesn't work as well, so it doesn't clear these damaged cells. And the amount of damage in our body has accumulated to the point where we have too many cells and it starts to overwhelm the immune system. And so we think these damaged cells that secrete inflammatory proteins that accumulate with age can help drive the aging process itself. So to, to uh, visualize this in a different way, the, the way we like to describe this, it's like the bad apple in a bushel. So as that bad apple spoils, which is like a senescent cell, it releases factors that drive the other apples in the bushel to spoil. And this is something we've seen with a variety of different fruits and vegetables. And so if you think with age and time, if you accumulate these cells and then they start to spread this these factors that lead to aging and damage in other cells, what this can do is damage the tissue and drive aging. And so one of our goals at the University of Minnesota is to identify drugs that will actually kill those senescent cells and eliminate them so they don't damage the surrounding tissue. So an interesting concept, but at this point, a lot of proof of principle demonstrating the feasibility. So how do we do this? So I'll give you a couple of examples. One, uh, Laura and myself and a number of other labs have just studied senescent cells. What is a senescent cell? What does it look like and what does it do? And this, by studying senescent cells, we've identified that we can use specific dyes, in this case, one that will turn senescent cells blue, to identify a senescent cell and separate it from a non-senescent cell. And we can do this in the animal, in the human, or, or in this case, in the laboratory. And so using this ability to, to identify senescent cells because we can turn them blue, this now gives us the opportunity to do drug screening and drug development. So in this case, we have cells we can grow in culture and we can stress them. We can irradiate them, we can throw toxic molecules on them and they become senescent and we can stain those cells blue. As you can see, they're blue cells on this plate. And then we can throw drugs in this plate of cells. And in fact, we can do this out of 384 wells on a single plate, and we can do a number of different plates. So we can screen a million drugs this way for things which might kill just the blue cells. And we can then image it in a, in a certain uh, device we have in the lab, and we can see changes in the size of the cells. We also can see changes in number, and we can see the loss of this blue staining. And then this image is actually a fluorescent signal. And by doing this, we can identify drugs that specifically kill senescent cells. The other way that we've done this is we've analyzed them molecularly for every change we can find. And this just shows different genes that are expressed in non-senescent cells versus senescent cells. And we can see that they're dramatically different. And by doing artificial intelligence analysis, so a lot of computer analysis, we can identify what are called nodes that are uh, upregulated or increased in these cells. And this has been used over the, the number of years to identify targets for cancer therapy because these nodes are upregulated and are thought to be things which protect the tumor cell from dying. And we now think we can identify these nodes which are involved in protecting senescent cells from dying. And in fact, that was one of the aha moments we've had over the last five years 
is comparing the senescent cell to a tumor cell, they actually appear to be very similar. So one of the things we've been able to do is take existing cancer drugs, in this case called Spricel, that's used for certain types of leukemias and lymphomas, as well as certain types of solid tumors. A natural product you can buy at, at the pharmacy uh, or at the drugstore that has been shown to have anti-cancer activity. And then a new drug that's not yet clinically approved, but it's been in clinical trials for certain types of cancers called Naviticlax. And we've shown that if you add these drugs to a culture of senescent cells, it will specifically kill those senescent cells and not the non-senescent cells. So unlike cancer, where you have to treat the patient every day, the, the interesting thing about developing drugs that are called senolytics that kill these senescent cells is we don't have to give them every day. So the thought here is we could give them intermittently, so once a month, once every six months. And what they would do is clear these senescent cells here shown in yellow. So if you treat once a month or every six months, you clear the senescent cells, and then over time, due to the damage, the cells come back, and you treat again to clear the senescent cells. And so using this approach, we've been working in a number of different preclinical animal models. And these are animal models of a variety of diseases of aging, including Alzheimer's, pulmonary fibrosis, osteoarthritis, kidney disease. And clearing these senescent cells has improved every one of these diseases, as well as extended health span in animal models. And there are currently 10 clinical trials ongoing at the Mayo Clinic and soon at the University of Minnesota using these repurposed drugs to treat these diseases. So this isn't just something that's in the laboratory, it's something which is now is used clinically. And so I, just before Laura uh, closes, I'd just like to say one thing that's not on this list is actually viral infection. So one of the things that's been observed is that with the COVID-19 pandemic, people over 65 are dying at a higher frequency. And we now have data that suggests that if you clear these senescent cells, at least from animal models, that it reduces mortality in aged animals exposed to viral infection. So we're starting a clinical trial to clear senescent cells to see if it reduces mortality following COVID-19 infection. So that is another application. And Laura referred to the metformin uh, being used uh, as a way of not only treating type 2 diabetes, but seems to delay a number of other conditions. There, there are studies being shown that metformin treatment actually is reducing mortality, or at least hospitalization, of people over 65. So it looks like metformin treatment may have a benefit too. Again, uh, consistent with the concept that what we want to target is aging and not specific diseases.